Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As a mathematician, one must be frustrated with the voting system. You could see from uh, Professor Nurmi all these paradoxes. There are actually no rules. Almost nothing is satisfied. It's just totally frustrating to study that and to make, even make a choice. And despite of that, or maybe uh, because of that, I uh, dare to say that the voting, how we vote, is not a dot in the last dot in the sentence, but it's actually the grammar, is the structure, is the language. It's one of the very, very important things that we need, especially now in today's world. It was not so much in the past. In the past, when democracy newly appeared, the first past the post voting system was probably okay, uh, even though not so good still, but uh, it wasn't. Um, a default as it is today, as we can see in the rise of extremism, populism. We could see uh, from uh, Professor Emerson's talk that uh, how the first past the post system is really weak. I will not be talking about that so much, but I will focus on an alternative voting system called uh, D21. And uh, first, let me just say a brief uh, only uh, introduction of my, m myself. As Adam said, I actually I am the founder of company RSJ, a market maker on international de de derivative exchanges, a very successful one. And yes, I did my mathematical modeling and uh, so programming and nothing else until it happened that the company was so successful that I realized that uh, one needs to go further. And I started to think about uh, uh, what, what is important in the society. And yes, research and science is so important thing. So that is why I started the foundation called Neuron, Neuron Foundation for Support of Research and Science. That was in year 2008-2009, and then I was more open to what was happening in public, and I could see a rising corruption, when the rising was already uh, rose above all limits, corruption in the Czech Republic, extremely negative, something that is like a cancer of society. Corruption is like a cancer cells. If they blow up too much, they kill uh, the organism. And I decided uh, to do, try to do something about that, uh, because I like to do something with things that are uh, bad. And I always believe that uh, fairness is an important value for humans. And so that is why I started the uh, um, endowment uh, against corruption. Endowment against corruption. I already knew how to start endowment, so this was just an easy step to give prices to whistleblowers, to those people who are thereful enough to do uh, something against corruption and to even risk their lives. So this happened, and the uh, anti-corruption endowment is working. It is successful. But nevertheless, after like uh, one or two years of existence of the anti-corruption endowment, I realized one thing. I realized that the core of the problem of uh, society, of our society, Czech Republic, but it, I, can, uh, I dare to generalize it in, uh, more broadly, is uh, not directly the core of the corruption. It's a consequence. But the core is those people who are leaders, those people who are making decisions, who are making the laws. So I was thinking, OK, what to do next? We should do something about that, uh, what for the change it, uh, the way people are elected. And that is why I started to become interesting voting system, something that was uh, by the time completely out of my focus. And uh, I designed a voting system against corruption which is not what I will be talking about, but it was a voting system based on a minus vote, vote, vote against. It was in 2012, and in fact, I even started a movement to promote this voting system here in the Czech Republic. The movement did not succeed. I was too naive to believe that I can just uh, um, like um, raise people to make changes in voting system. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't the right way to go. But nevertheless, I didn't give up, and I continued working on voting system. And one year later, I got the idea of effect of multiple votes, which is the thing that I will be uh, talking uh, briefly about here. Now, it is the D21 voting method. And what is the basic, the crucial um, feature of the D21 voting method, it is that each voter has more votes than the winning candidates. So if there is one winner, if we have presidential elections, each voter can vote for two, or maybe even three people. We'll see further. Now, uh, just a very... Uh, uh, Overview. Well, uh, just uh, it's actually I won't even be talking about it because you all heard it. Uh, version 1.0 of democracy, first past the post. It is democracy, but it just doesn't work. It's separate. It's separate society, and we can see it now. We can see with objective data what is happening, uh, not only in the United States but elsewhere as well. 
Now we have uh, we have um, maybe small upgrade, but not too much better proportional voting system like in the Czech Republic. And in fact, in the Czech Republic, the system, especially uh, when it was uh, like 10 years ago, was pro-corrupt. It motivated, uh, it actually enhanced corruption because in order for you to be uh, in front on the party list to be elected, you had to be bound to the political party and you had to do something for it, etc., etc. So then we have uh, then we have other voting systems. Um, uh, one example would be single transfer vote. I put it here as version 1.7. It is a complicated voting system. It is, of course, better than the proportional, but it is not really good, given how complicated it is. It has very uh, many bad properties. Like, for example, board account voting system is, in my view, much better than single transfer vote, but board account has, uh, for example, the weakness that it can be easily manipulated, etc. so there are uh, other discussions. Now, um, I dare to denote um, as 1.9, the voting system against corruption, uh, which version was 2C voting district, or so 2 people win per voting district, and each voter has two upvotes and one vote against. And that was designed against corruption, and it would indeed help, specifically in the Czech Republic, but then it was still version uh, type of one point something. And then we have upgrade, this is, it's somehow <laughs> continuing by itself. And then we have upgrade uh, from version 1.x to, uh, from DOS to Windows, or maybe from DOS to Linux, and we have version 2.1, 21, and that's uh, D21, and that, that's, I will be talking about it now. So now imagine a simple example where, where a group of uh, par conference participants uh, want to decide where to go for dinner after the, after the symposium, and they decide to do it fairly, so they decide to vote. And we can see an example here where McDonald wins, because two people win. Now, what, what is actually, we can ask, what should be uh, the objective of voting? What should we people search for? Well, we could argue that people, uh, we, we would like to search to maximize the global utility, the utility of the society, so the sum of individual utilities, assuming that utility function exists, etc. but that's another, uh, another uh, interesting topic. But anyway, uh, this choice in this example is probably the worst choice from the total utility. And what is the pain? Well, a point, well, uh, the, the people who voted for Italian restaurant would be happy with Greece as well, but they just would not want McDonald's. So this first pass the post system is really uh, the worst, giving the bad results. Now we have kind of alternative, and now we are D21. D21 means more votes than winners. So here one restaurant's win. D21 gives a second vote to everybody, which you can use with the same weight as the first one. That's the difference, for example, from board account. So now this would be a result. And as an option of D21, you can also have the vote against. So you can see if you also can uh, downvote or, or give minus vote, then McDonald's from the first place goes uh, as the only one to negative. So this is an, of course, artificial exa example to illustrate the point. But the example, these features that are illustrated here are actually the real features. And now tell, let me tell you one uh, funny story. I was giving uh, this similar presentation uh, in uh, Washington DC and uh, Mason University at a conference. And we did voting afterwards for people to find consensual drink. Like we, we, here you have a voting for the personality of the past. Unfortunately, the results look too consistent. But there it was more interesting because people are voting for consensual drink. And what happened is, that with one vote, the winner would be beer, with one vote, but with multiple votes, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the D21 method, actually beer was the last. That's very interesting. So, so it went from, so exactly this happened. So this, uh, for this example that you can see did happen in practice uh, in, a, in a fun uh, game. Now let me uh, uh, look at D21 um, uh, more um, uh, from, the consensus point of view. If we have a traditional voting system, what often happens is that you have extreme right, extreme left, and those polarized, uh, polarized groups 
in democracy, they have a much higher impact on, the, on what's going on they, they should deserve, because they are connected, they are by nature uh, synchronized. Now, if you take, uh, like the, let's say, uh, uh, democratic um, middle or uh, the other people who are democratic, they, they often argue and they, they are not synchronized. Uh, so they split their votes, called also for uh, vote splitting is happening a lot. Now, with D21, what happens is that everybody has more votes than the winners. So let's say, let's speak about one winner, so two votes. And now, uh, assume that one is a voter of uh, non-consensual voter. has only one candidate, let's say the extreme right, doesn't want anybody else. So such a voter will give one vote to the uh, extreme right candidate, but will not use the other vote or use it randomly. Okay, so that's a, a similar argument applies if we uh, talk about populist. If we, uh, if we have a populist politician who has his uh, flock of uh, followers, they give him their vote, and these people are probably going to use the other vote randomly or not use it at all. Now, what happens to those people who are interested in politics and who are democratic voters? They will certainly use all their votes efficiently. So what might happen would illustrate by this example. So by nature vote, uniform equal voting right, in fact, statistically speaking, we are giving more voting power to uh, what we could call conscious democratic voters, or at least those people who are interested in politics and who know how to use their other votes and who are consensual. We are uh, stressing the consensus here. Now, uh, indeed, uh, D21 is, uh, I dare to say, a very unique method to find consensus. It is something new. And uh, there are other methods which find consensus, like, for example, approval voting. Uh, but there are, uh, they have uh, other weaknesses. For example, approval voting might be uh, sometimes too consensual. And uh, I will uh, argue more, actually, in a, in a second. Now, uh, we are now using it uh, in many places, like, for example, participatory budgeting, consensual participatory budgeting in New York, and we already, or my colleague already mentioned that. Um, I will now like to give you some data, some uh, data that we actually did here in the Czech Republic when we were running a game called President 21. It was uh, two years ago when uh, the president, more than two years, anyway, uh, presidential elections. And we gave people the opportunity to vote for Czech president, even to nominate people. And we had like in total 330,000 people voting, nominating many, many candidates. Uh, in the last part of the game, we let people uh, to vote only for the, for the official candidates. And here are the results. And I believe that uh, the results will illustrate what I was trying to explain more clearly. So almost 330,000 people voting. Now here, only one vote. Who was the winner? Obviously, those people who were there, um, uh, who were voting were not representative sample. Those were 330,000 people. And yes, there were more people uh, who, wo who were uh, in favor of uh, Professor Drahoš and fewer people of uh, Zeman, um, our current president. So you can see in our, in our game, social game, responsible social game, Zeman was second. Okay, so that's uh, no, no problem, that's fine. So this is not a representative sample, but wh why, what is important is what happens next. So these are the results if people were to use only one vote. Now, and what happens with D21? Look at the change. And look at number five. Number five is uh, uh, Hilscher, uh, Mr. Hilscher. So from five and two, look at two and five, just up votes. So from two, from five, Mr. Hilscher goes to second place, and Zemat goes from second place to fifth, without using the minus vote, only using the effect of multiple votes, the up votes. So you can see that Mr. Hilscher from the second place got more second votes then the first one, that's very interesting. So this is exactly the example of who would be a consensual candidate. So, um, so this, is, this is the point to find consensus, to, uh, to find a president which, uh, which uh, appeals uh, not only to their primary voters, but also, also appeals to voters of, other, of others, of opponents. 
So this is the result of the, the game. And now I will show you one more result. Uh, this is a result from exit polls uh, that we did. Now this is a representative sample. In fact, uh, it was over 4,000 people, so it's a big sample. And uh, like the game, President 21, except this is represent sample. So you can see that in a represent sample, as we would expect, Miloš Zeman is the first 39% on the left graph. If we were use only um, only one vote. Jerzy Drahoš was second, etc. But if we were to use D21, this time with also the dumb votes, uh, Miloš Zeman drops down and Jerzy Drahoš is the winner. Okay, so, so we can see that this method um, finds the consensual leader. Now, we are not saying by no means that D21 is voting method against, um, against uh, Zeman, not at all. What we are saying is change the rules, change the game. We change the rules and everything changes and it is, it is, the, it is the structure. It is very important what the rules are. Mr. Zeman is a very um, smart person. Uh, I have known him personally since the 90s and um, I had quite respect to him, uh, which is not so much n anymore. But nevertheless, uh, if the rules were different, people would behave differently and this is a plus. It's not that people would uh, just uh, manipulate to get voted, but people would just behave differently. The whole system, the whole ecosystem, the whole energy of the politics would just behave differently if the rules are different. So uh, we are not saying that with the different voting system, Zeman would have to necessarily lose, but he would just be, uh, he could win, but he would have to be a different person. So here is another interesting graph. For, uh, for you to see. Here, uh, we, I, won't, I won't go into details because there is no time for that. But here in, in these graphs, you can see um, what happens if we have five candidates and one of them is a polarizing candidate. Polarizing meaning that there are many people for and many people against. So now on the left, one means that there is no polarizing candidate. From one to seven, the polarization of only one candidate increases. And now we look uh, what happens here. Now, um, on the on y-axis is the uh, percentage of total utility of, of all the voters together. Here, this simulation, this is a Monte Carlo simulation uh, that shows that if uh, the effect of different voting system given the limited number of voters, okay? So what happens? Look at, uh, look at um, uh, the blue line. It is very interesting, the, the dark blue line. If there is no polarization, the results are different for voting system, except the, the green is, uh, is uh, average, and the, uh, the bottom line is the worst utility, okay? The worst choice is the bottom line, the green is average, random. The green is random choice. Green is random choice. Now, the dark blue is first past the post. So as soon as we have polarizing candidates, uh, the first past the post performs worse and worse, and in fact, when, it, uh, when the polarity is very high, it is worse than random choice. Okay, so first pass the post voting system can be worse than if we choose randomly from the candidates. Now, uh, I can explain more in detail why that. This, this, this is due to no logical normalization issue, but uh, I want anybody interested in that, I can go more detail in that. Now, you can see the red line is D21 with uh, also the downvote. With the downvote that you can see whom you do not, do not want, you are, not losing any, you are losing just a tiny bit against the optimum choice. And uh, the light uh, blue line, the, the, uh, from the third from the bottom, is D21 with, without the uh, downvote. So you can see the most important effect is the multiple votes, but the downvote is, uh, or minus vote is also very useful. Now, um, I think I was fast. How much time do I have? Three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll finish just on time. So here um, you can see a very nice uh, characteristic, uh, of modern characteristic of types of candidates uh, is Dharma Grundar, uh, it's 2017 publication. And uh, you can see the different types of candidates. So on, the, uh, on A, we have popular candidate. So can, can candidate that has a large support and is not controversial. Such a candidate wins and wins under any voting system, even the first past the post. Okay, so if we have such a candidate, we are fine and uh, no problem. Then unpopular candidate is B, has no support and has people against, loses under any voting system. What is the big 
distinction or what is the what makes difference is uh, C and D. So C we have exactly the polarizing candidate. And unfortunately, it pays off more and more in today's society to be polarizing, to be uh, to separate society into two groups. So such a polarizing candidate has many uh, supporters and has also many people against. Uh, contrary to that is candidate D, which is like a medium candidate, which is not the first choice of many, but it is <coughs> He or she is okay. He has, has a medium support, and there are no people against. So now, what voting system are about is that, um, like D21, that D21 chooses the medium candidate rather than the polariz polarizing white. Chooses the consensual person, and this is important. What we need to achieve. And again, there are different voting systems which which are also good. Um, uh, like for example. Um, um, the French mathematicians, I forgot. Uh, major, majority judgment. Uh, majority judgment is, for example, a great voting system uh, for experts. Really good, really logical. Uh, but I dare to argue that, especially for political applications, uh, D21 is the choice for now and for the future. Uh, it, is, um, it is very difficult to manipulate. Um, the, um, it doesn't satisfy, for a mathematician, no criteria satisfy. It doesn't satisfy the Condorcet winner, uh, the uh, participation criteria are different. But nevertheless, it satisfies almost all the time. And this is the important thing. In order for you to construct an example where uh, D21 does not give the good result, you have to make artificial example. Okay, with there are uh, two votes, you need to somebody who is always on the third place, etc. You can do it, but it is it is very artificial. In a natural sense, it is uh, it is very hard uh, to manipulate, and uh, it has great results. And the last slide, which is which is uh, actually I like to mention, and now is another feature which I believe is very important, and uh, I get to it last. So I start uh, bottom right. Efficient, transparent, easy. It is so, we can prove it, we run it many tests, people using it and people love it because they can express their opinions. They, can, they have multiple votes and they can also vote against somebody. Uh, so that, this, is, this is very good. Uh, chance for small parties. If you have two seat voting this thing and four up votes, small parties will make it. They will have only one candidate, they will rationally use only one candidate and they will attract third and four votes. A good personality will be in the parliament. Uh, the probability distribution of the parliament will be such that there will be more uh, candidates from small parties, not like the proportional system in the Czech Republic, but even small parties will have few representatives. At the same time, there is a majority effect. So a consensual big party is likely to become even stronger. How comes, to sum up to one, well, medium parties either make it to become even better or they drop down, okay? So, uh, so the distribution will be such that it is less stable for politicians, okay? So it can be somebody, a good party is favorable, but if it uh, gets displeased, it can drop out much faster. D21 is against populism, are argued about that. It promotes engagement. You don't have to vote lesser evil. You have your tools. You can express your opinion. You can discuss with people whom you voted against. So obviously, uh, the minus vote is a big att attraction for politics, obviously. And now, uh, the, the last point, positive campaigns. How, if you want to become, a, now it's not a presidential elections, you want to be a president and you have your support, what will be your political campaign? How will it look like? Well, it will be a positive political campaign. You will choose some of your opponents, and you will be saying how in what they are offering is good, that they are good, that they are offering good things. Of course, you would do it even better, but you point out the good things that your opponents are offering, at least some of them. And why? Well, because in order for you to win, you need to attract not only the votes of, of your uh, voters, but also second or third votes of your opponents. So, so this makes a total change in the political landscape. This simple rule of uh, effect of multiple votes flips over uh, democracy from negative campaigning to, in most cases, in all practical cases, to a positive one, at least uh, from a big part of the political scene. So you, you choose some candidates against with which you will make positive campaigning. Uh, it's not worth it to make negative. Um, 
Thank you very much. And I'm hoping that uh, actually because we are now in this, I already said, the crossroad of uh, civilization. I believe that we are approaching so-called uh, social security. I call it social security 21. Like, uh, um, you know, singularity is a point where you either jump to plus infinity or minus infinity, roughly speaking. And social security means that uh, we as human society either totally fail and destroy our Earth and ourselves, or we just jump to a different level of communication, co cooperation, support, and uh, and consensus. And I'm, I, I, I believe that the voting and the D21 could be and hopefully will be one of the major tools on the way to H21. And H21 is uh, upgrade to water, which is H20. So we have uh, this uh, this abstract world of us, which we are already in uh, in in. in um, in the internet and all the abstract world, so it's, it's the energy that I call H21, human of the 21st century. And thank you very much.